Hello and welcome to Bushfire Forge School of Bladesmithing. My name is Owen Bush and today I'm going to be forging a blacksmith's knife. The knife I'm going to be working on today is a, a blacksmith's knife or a, a otherwise known as a Viking knife or a Viking lady's knife. This knife is actually a, a modern design um, that I've taken elements of a very old design. The original knife I based this on is a second century AD bogfine knife um, from Denmark. So whilst this is often called a Viking knife, it's not in fact from the Viking age. The original design was from the second century AD and I've got a modern take on it. I've changed the ergonomics of it so that it's more comfortable in the hand. The original knife had a scroll in this area and I've uh, curved the handle over so that it feels good as a using knife. So a knife you could chop vegetables with or use for, for general tasks. I'm going to be using a few tools whilst I forge this knife today. Two different weight bladesmiths hammers. I've got a three pound hammer and a two and a half pound hammer. I'll use the three pound hammer for heavier work. Engineer's chalk, tape measure, a pair of tongs, and a cut-off hardy, which is an upside-down chisel that fits in the anvil. I'm going to be working out of a gas forge. I'm using a steel called EN9. It's a UK equivalent of 1050 steel, so it's a 0.5% carbon steel. And I'll be working in a, a gas forge because the gas forge has some distinct advantages over the traditional coal forge or solid fuel forge. The steel that I'm using has a burning temperature of uh, 1450 centigrade. In a traditional um, solid fuel forge, a coke forge, you get an up top temperature of somewhere around about 2200 centigrade. So by using a gas forge where I can set the temperature, I can make sure I don't burn my material. And I'm going to set this gas forge at a temperature of somewhere between 1300 and 1400 centigrade. Now because the gas forge is not as hot as a coke forge, one of the tricks to using a forge like this is to make sure that the steel is hot when you bring it out of the forge. So I'm going to wait until the steel becomes the same temperature as the forge before I start working on it. And I can tell that the steel is at the same temperature as the forge by looking inside of the forge. What I want to see before I pull the steel out every time I work it is that the steel is the same colour as the lining of the forge, that same bright orange colour. And I'm going to keep working this material only whilst it's bright orange. I don't want to let it cool down until it's red or definitely not black. I'll get um, a better economy of effort if I have hot material to work. The steel is very soft when it's hot. I'm going to start out by using seven centimetres of material to forge the handle out on this knife. So I've marked seven centimetres on the anvil. The reason I'm using chalk to mark is that the tape measure here is made of plastic or has a plastic coating on it and I don't want to end up destroying my tape measure. So I'm going to mark seven centimetres with the chalk line and then just give the steel a little knock so that I have a physical um, mark on there that I can't miss. And the first thing that I'm going to do is try and forge try and forge the step into the steel. I'm going to differentiate the area between the blade, this is going to be the blade, and the handle. And I'm forging this step by forcing material around the curved section on the anvil. So I'm hitting as if I was aiming towards the edge of the anvil, and I'm trying to force the steel around the anvil. And as I work the steel, uh, the material starts to thicken as I'm pushing it around the anvil. So I'm gently going to knock the thickening out. Most of the processes involved in forging, certainly if you're working over an over open anvil like this, um, are going to be processes where we have two steps forward and then one step back. 
I want this material to push in, I want it to stretch a little bit, but it's also thickening. So I'm going to have to take control of that thickening when I see it. And I'm controlling that thickening by tapping the material back in, so it's not thickening too much. I'll either do one of two things whilst I'm forging normally. I'll either at the end of every heat correct the material, straighten it, uh, take any things that are happening to it that aren't what I want and push them into form, or I'll do one heat forging, one heat correcting. So now I've forged the, the step into the steel, I'm going to start working on the piece that's going to be the handle. The material I'm working on is much higher than it is wide. So as I forge it down, it's very likely that it's going to buckle on me. Um, I've got to try and make sure I take control of that buckling. So I'll be forging very heavily down, gently on the side to correct the buckling. I'm still using the three pound hammer whilst I'm doing this heavy forge work. As my hammering gets a bit lighter, I'll change to a lighter hammer. I couldn't swing a three pound hammer all day. Though the material still looks like it's hot, I'm going to put it back in the forge. I want to be working it right at the top of its heat range, bringing it out of the forge at a bright orange and putting it back in whilst it's still orange. Now that I've brought the material down to a roughly a square shape, I'm going to start working on bringing out the width in this handle. I'd like two tapers, one going from thin material to thick material and one going from thicker material very gently down to thin so that I have an elegant handle. The handle's doing a few things. It's acting as a lever whilst you're controlling the blade. So it needs to have some thickness in this section where it wants to be strong. And it also wants to have a nice elegance so that when we forge the scrolls of the handle in, there's a nice flow to the handle shape. Whilst I'm doing heavy forging like this, I'm making sure I lift my hammer so I can allow for the gravity to accelerate the hammer head down. And I'm not trying to very furiously do lots of little tight blows. I keep a loose hold on my hammer, lift it above my head if I'm doing a nice heavy hit. Now I've got the width that I want in this handle piece. I'm going to work to neaten it up and draw out a little more length. And I've swapped hammers. I'm going down to a two and a half pound hammer. I'll compare the length of the piece I'm working on with a, a previously made sample. So I've got maybe another inch of uh, material I need to draw out on this handle. I've still got quite a bit of thickness, so I'm going to use that thickness and push it into length. I'll just give myself a reference mark. From the end of the anvil to the chalk mark is where I'm trying to get some length. 
length on this piece. Still got half an inch or so to go. And the handle's looking relatively even, so I'll try and take a, a little bit of material everywhere along the length of the handle and just stretch it all a tiny little bit. Very nearly there on the length. As I'm working this piece down, I'm trying to keep good form. So if I see any little bulges, I'll tap them in. And if the piece wasn't straight at all, I'd try and straighten it. Even though I may end up making a curved knife, and the handle's definitely going to be quite curved, um, I want to try and keep the piece straight whilst I'm working on it. It allows me to keep control uh, of the material and the way it's distributed. So I'm going to forge a little bevel on the top edge of this knife. The top edge is going to end up being the outside of the handle. At the moment it's got very square corners. So I'm overlapping my hammer. forming a little bevel on the upper edge. I'd like the handle to have a very, very light D section, a little bit like a, a wedding ring or something like that, so that it feels nice in your hand, nice against your skin. Once again, I'm trying to keep everything straight whilst I'm working it. So I finished a bevel on here. I just want to tidy up the end as it's looking a little ragged. straighten everything up and that's the handle area finished. Next thing I'm going to do is start working on the blade. Now up until this point life's been relatively easy for me because I've got the steel attached to a handle so I'm not having to fuss around with tongs. As soon as I cut this material off and I'm going to use the hardy for cutting it off, as soon as I do cut the material off I have to work with tongs and that makes things a little bit more tricky. I'm going to allow five centimetres of material to forge the blade from. So once again I'm marking five centimetres on the anvil. And I'm going to cut the blade off with a hardy tool. Hardy is an upside down chisel, it fits in the square hole of the anvil, called the hardy hole. Um, and I'm going to mark the steel at five centimetres. 
then give it a, a little cut on the hardy so I have a definite mark to work from. Hardies are potentially dangerous tools, so I have a few rules about using them. I don't put the hardy into the anvil until I'm ready to use it, and I take it out again as soon as I finish. If you were just roughly forging on the anvil, you can easily cut your fingers. I normally forge with my hand quite close to the hammerhead. For this tool, I make sure my grip is further back, so that if I did miss, I may cut into the hammer handle, but I'm not cutting my finger off. And lastly, I don't cut all the way through the material. I want to cut partially through the material. And I leave a little bit of metal there to break off. And I'm treating this a bit like if you were trying to break an old metal coat hanger. Just bending it backwards and forwards until it rips off. Now I'm going to start working on the blade, put the hardy away. So I've got a, a roughly square section of steel, I'm going to start forging a point on this piece. Now as soon as I start using tongs, things get a little tricky. So I've got to work out how to hold the material before I forge it. I'm working on creating a point on my piece of material. I'm going to forge back down into it. So I'm going to try and hold it here with the tongs. I'm going to change my position on the anvil, stepping forward so that I can hit back towards myself. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to force that corner into the material. I'm trying to upset it or, um, or jump it up. I forged the corner in, the material's thickened, so I'm going to have to take account of that thickness. Then I'm looking to forge a neat outline on the blade. I'm not going to work on the bevels yet, I'm just looking at it from a two-dimensional point of view. I'm keeping all the thickness in the blade, and forging the outline. very much a case of two steps forward and one step back. As I hit the material it thickens, I want to knock that thickness back in, it tends to blend the blade again. So I'm going to be constantly working it until I have a nice form. When I draw the, the bevels on this, when I pull the bevels out, the blade is going to get wider. So I need to make sure at this point that the blade is actually quite elegant looking. If it's not elegant looking at this point, it's going to end up being a pretty dumpy blade. Work the tip. I'm pushing the blade right up to the edge of the anvil. And up until this point, all the forging I've done has been pretty um, hard forging. I've been doing gross work on it, trying to get big material section changes. I'm going to turn the forge down a little now because what I'm trying to do it requires a bit more finesse. So I'm going to start working on the bevels on this knife. Now forging bevels can be, can be a complicated thing. In essence what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take my hammer and come in at an angle, form a wedge between the hammer and the anvil. 
then I'm bringing my steel in at a, a, an angle that is 50% of the angle between the hammer and the anvil. So hopefully if I get the angles right, I should be creating a bevel on the top that is equal to the bevel on the bottom. The bevel on the top being created by the hammer and the bevel on the bottom being created by the anvil pushing back up against the steel. Now, in practice, although every action has an equal and opposite reaction, in practice you tend to get a slightly different result from the hammer than you do from the anvil, just because the hammer's impacting. So I'm going to work my material at a very slight angle. I have my hammer coming in. at a slight angle. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for that bevel to be the same distance up both sides of this blade. And if I was to be critical about this piece now, I'd say that on this side, on the top side, the bevel is very slightly further up the blade than it is at the bottom. So I'm going to lower my angle, the angle I'm holding my blade at, so that more of the blade is contacting the anvil. Lower my angle very slightly. And now I have a bevel angle that's looking pretty similar on both sides. I can use that to reference the rest of my forging. So I'm going to feel that first and then carry on forging at that angle. You can see immediately that the blade is bent. Now whilst I still have enough edge thickness in the blade, I'm going to straighten it by hitting the edge. There's no problem with forging the edge of your knife as long as the material is thin enough. If the blade starts getting so thin that when I forge it the edge curls over, I'll stop forging that way. There's another way I can straighten the blade. So to straighten this up, I straighten by treating material as if it's a bridge. So it has a curve in it, I put the curve on the anvil, two points of contact, and then I break the bridge down. And if you have complex curves where the blade's doing all of this, break it down into individual curves and work from the biggest curve down to the smallest. And straightening the blade again, there's still enough thickness at the edge. So every time I notice that the blade has bent, I'm forging it straight again. As long as there's enough thickness in the edge. I straighten blades by imagining every blend as a bridge and you break the bridge down by hammering on it. And that works just fine as long as the edge isn't so thin that when you forge the edge you curl the blade over. So I'm getting quite close to that point now. So I'll have to use another technique for straightening my blade. If I start forging a bit more on the edge, the edge is going to get so thin that I can no longer hammer on it. So I'm going to change my forging from the edge to forging along the spine. If I forge along the edge, it bends the blade away from the hammer, and if I forge along the spine, it bends it back. You can see that bend's been straightened up now. Whilst I'm doing that forging, I look at the outline of the blade and the way it changes as I gently forge it.
by forging down the spine, I'm also trying to create a distal taper, a taper from the beginning of the blade to the tip. Straighten the whole piece out. And that'll do. I'm relatively pragmatic when it comes to the use of grinding in blades. I see grinding as another tool. I don't think forging's sacred, even though it is the best fun part of all of this. So I'd let that cool down and I'll grind an outline on it, bring it back to the forge. Because it's a forged finished knife, the edge has to be very thin. The edge of this has to be thin enough to pass through the material it's cutting. So unlike if I was going to grind a knife out of this material, um, I have to make sure that the edge is thin. So if I go and grind an outline on this blade and the edge has become too thick because I've ground further into it, I'll forge it again. So now I've ground the, the blade up, I've just very quickly gone over the outline. I did that on a belt sander, something I'll talk about in, a, in another vid. Um, and I'm ready to start making the handle. Handle on this knife has a little finger scroll and then a much bigger bend. I'm going to do the finger scroll first and then come back and do the main bend. Now, scroll work is one of those things that if it goes right, um, it's great. If it goes wrong, you're often better off straightening the whole piece and starting again. There's a flow to it that happens if the, if the forging is correct. So I'm going to start working on the little finger scroll, I'm making sure that the blade is pointing upright and I'll just be stroking the material off the edge, millimetre by millimetre. Really one of those things that I'm going quite gently. Just making a little curl that will hold my finger. If it wasn't tight enough, I could take it and form it over the bit, but this is looking pretty good. I'm now going to work on bending the whole handle shape around. I want to keep the first third of the handle straight, bend the middle third, keep the third third straight. So I've got to make sure it's hot in the middle. You're doing two things when you're working on an anvil normally. You're either squashing material or you're bending it. And it kind of depends on whether you put the material in between the anvil and your hammer or whether you hammer away from where the anvil is. So I'm going to use the bit, the pointy part of the anvil, to support this material. Supporting the first third, and then forging it round the bit. And I'm going to bring it round to a point where I can tell if I'm going to hit the right spot fall short or be too long on this. It looks like it's about right. Now it's important that the metal's actually hot whilst you're scrolling. If the material isn't hot, it'll flow when it's hot. If it's not hot, then what will happen when you try and bend it is you will bend either the thinnest piece of material or you'll bend the material that you're applying most leverage to. And I want a nice even bend in this handle. So I'm going to very gently this around. So I've got a nice scrolled shape. I have a couple of personal rules. I like the finger notch to be above the blade so I could use the blade on a cutting board. And I like the finger notch to be touching the blade so there's not too much spring in the handle. If I just look, I've got the tiniest bit of twist, but I'm quite happy with that. It's a, it's a simple knife, it's a blacksmith's knife. So this is the forging finished on this uh, blacksmith's knife. Um, 
One of the annoying things about working in hot metal is you don't get to actually feel what it's like until you finish it, but this feels good in the hand. The, the scroll is nice to my finger. I'm gonna talk about the heat treatment on this blade in another video, um, but they are the, the forging of a blacksmith's knife. Thank you very much.